Lavender Hill Loft. I want to show you three pedigrees and I want you to take a look at them and study them just for a moment. It's number one. This is number two. And this is number three. Each one of these represents a form of inbreeding. And I want to be clear what the definition of inbreeding is because there's a lot of misinformation out there about what truly inbreeding is. Inbreeding is father to daughter, mother to son, brother, sister, half brother, half sister. Anything else is pure and simple line breeding. Now let's take a look at this particular pedigree. This is 209. And if we look, we can see that 314 shows up in this pedigree twice. Let's see, also we see 117 in this pedigree twice. So what we have here is we have 314 paired to a daughter to get us 209. This is a father-daughter mating. That is pure inbreeding. Second one is for 1809. And looking at this pedigree, we see that we have 0080 twice with different hens, which makes these this cock and this hen half brother, half sister, making 1809 inbred. And let's at 17,699. I see 669. I see it again here. I also notice that 669 has been paired to 5123, making 89 or 998 rather, and 234, a full brother sister, making 17,699 the most inbred pigeon here. Why would we inbreed our pigeons? The reason we do that is we're trying to preserve, create, or purify a line. What do I mean by that? Some people believe that if they have a Huskin Van Real cock and they only pair it to another Huskin Van Real cock, that they're inbreeding. And that's not necessarily the case. Most fanciers in Europe cross their birds and just because it's in their loft does not make it a Huskin Van Reel or a Jansen or any other type of bird. Um, occasionally you still see people selling Hansines or Wags or Hofkins. Neither of those fanciers had their own family of birds. They bought every single one of their breeding birds to create their racing birds um, they were not inbred. But there are families of birds that are highly inbred. Um, you would want to do this to maybe you're trying to preserve 0080 here. Um, some believe that if you take two inbred pigeons, for instance, if you took 209 paired to 1809, you would get what they call hybrid vigor and that's what everybody is going for. You usually have in an inbred pigeon it tends to be smaller, the pupil tends to be larger, the feathers tend to be maybe a little harder and less of a sheen, but when you take two inbred pigeons, put them together, you're going to get the hybrid vigor guaranteed. They're going to be bigger than their parents, they're going to um, 
be more robust, they may be less inclined to get disease, but more importantly what we're looking for is a bird that can race home faster than the rest. And that's why we inbreed our pigeons. This should not be done by the novice. This should be done by those who have been in the sport for a long time because you have to do one thing that we all don't necessarily like to do and that is to cull, cull, and cull our inbred pigeons. They have to cull out those that are weak, sick, um, that don't, you know, represent what we're going for. And you cannot do mate a pair up, get two babies, and expect them to represent what you're attempting to do. You should try to get at least eight to ten babies. Pick the best one or two and dispose of the rest. Um, take those two, pair them to two other highly inbred pigeons and you should be golden. It's not guaranteed but you have a high probability to produce something better than what you're breeding from. Lavender Hill Loft, Washington DC.